All right, so welcome back. Uh, we're here talking about the uh, Innovati Mini Hexavadino, and we've already gone through in the first part and opened up the box and all of its uh, all of its contents. We've gone ahead and opened up the CD now, and in the CD we find that there are many documents and many things. Um, you probably won't need them all for this particular kit. However, it's easily labeled and organized. When you go into the root of the CD after it's been mounted, there's a directory called English. Simply go into that directory, and it lists all of their robot kits, um, one of which is the Hexapodino. So you double-click on that Hexapodino uh, directory, and you'll quickly find that there's a bunch of files in there. Uh, what we've gone ahead and done and, uh, is that we've opened up the instructions manual. It's a PDF file, so you're going to need Adobe Acrobat to open this up. And it, uh, sure enough, is exactly what we're expecting to see. It's the instruction manual on how to build and how to use the mini Hexapodino. Now, as we kind of just scroll through this, we're looking through some basic information here, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, introduction, yada, 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 parts list. We highly recommend that you go through the parts list. Uh, it tells you all the screws, all the components, the standoffs, the uh, circuitry, modular components, cables, things like that. Now, going into the important parts, since we're going to be building this today, I'm going to put this off to the side. As per the, uh, the documentation, excuse me, it says the tools that are going to be required. So, tools are required are definitely a Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm going to whip out my trusty Phillips head screwdriver. In this case, we'll just use any Phillips head screwdriver that we have available. So we'll just use one of these. Um, the next part is the needle nose pliers. Again, you've seen me use this in the past. The needle nose pliers that I use. There's always this one right here, my trusty Husky from Home Depot. And it says I'm going to need a screwdriver. Uh, Let's see, screw glue. Um, now, I've talked about this in the past, so basically screw glue, or basically, uh, I think it's called Tapcon or something like that. Um, it's basically what you'd want to use when you, uh, when you want to make sure, it's called Loctite, sorry, actually, Loctite. Um, and that's used to keep screws in place. Um, now, we highly recommend that you follow their directions, um, but we're not going to use that for this demonstration. Sorry, while well, I'm looking for another, trying to find a screwdriver here that I actually like better than the one I'm planning on using. Uh, doesn't seem like I can find it, so we'll just go with what we have. And I'll go with another kit here that I've uh, that I've talked about in the uh, on the robot tutorial on how or what tools you should be using to build robots with. Okay, so I'm going to put these off to the side. It looks like I have just about everything I need to get started. The main important thing is that you have a big open area. This is my personal desk, so it's got plenty of room. So, moving on to the first part, it's the assembly procedure. Section 2 of the document. So, basically it says step 1 is assemble, assemble the supporting leg plates. Now, when installing, this says please pay attention that the left and right leg plates should be assembled in different orientation. Each side has three leg plates. So let's go ahead and see what that's in, what that's going to mean. So in our earlier diagrams or in our early uh, the first example, we talked about all the servos. So we're going to have to use a few servos now. So it looks like we just need uh, six of these for this first step. There's six, and it looks like we're going to need some of these leg plates, as they're calling them. Now the leg plates that they're talking about aren't the circular ones. I'm going to take them out of the box for now so you can see which ones I'm talking about. So it does not look like they're these, these circular ones. What it actually looks like, it looks like these here. Okay, according to the picture, notice how they're a little, uh, they're shaped like legs. I'm just going to put these out there. I'm going to take them all out because basically step one just says put them together. Now there are six of these just like there's six of the other oval ones as you can see here they're just oval those are going to be off to the side for now okay so it says go ahead and assemble those now how do we assemble them we simply grab the servos and we start screwing them in it's that simple so let's get started I'm going to take out one of the servos here we go okay now when you have these servos you're going to have to unravel them let's go ahead and unravel this it's tightly wound, so be careful not to uh, not to break off or ruin any of this, any you know, break off the connector or anything like that. So these are Savix 
servos. They look nice. They're plastic with this uh, metal base. Haven't seen that before, but these look nice and sturdy actually. Um, they're probably reinforced so that way they are uh, a little stronger because they can be used for walking. So basically it says to go ahead and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to build these and they're going to go in like so. Okay, take note, you're going to have to do two like this and two the opposite way. Okay, now I'm following the picture exactly on this one. Um, now what kind of screws am I going to need here? Now it looks like these come with screws but it's not the ones I'm going to be using. So I'm going to put these away and it says screw A are the screws that we need to use. So let's go ahead and open up our hardware. Screw A and it needs the nuts with screw A. So let's kind of figure out which ones are screw A. There's one hardware bag and we have another hardware bag here. These look like the right ones. There's not enough in there though. Definitely doesn't look like those. So I'm going to backtrack on the documentation and I'm going to look at what screws we need to have. So screw A just looks like a 3/8 three, three millimeter Phillips head uh, screw. It's a uh, flat, so it's not uh, it's not for tapping. So we've got a bunch of those there, actually right here. And do we have a bunch of them here too? Yeah, we do. So they look a little shorter, so I actually think it's going to be these here that are found in the little pouch where the standoffs are located. Now this is the one challenging part. It's not really challenging, but it can be confusing. You can be building it incorrectly. That you're going to have to know what screws go where. Now what I like to do is just make my life simpler. Is I like to keep things out of the way that I know I'm not going to need right now. So let me move these standoffs. And this this step says nothing about washers, so I'm going to move those out of the way. Always keep track and make sure you don't lose any of these things. Like I said earlier, if you lose one of these parts, you're going to wind yourself. You're going to wind up. Uh, and a bit of a, a problem trying to find the, these components again. So I'm just going to put these there and put these nuts in. See, the problem that I see here right away, though, is that these don't have enough. There's a big mixture of screws here. So it looks like these might be extra. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and open up the next uh, bag of screws. Let's see what I'm going to need. It's definitely not in the bag that comes with the servo. Uh, just by looking at it, I can tell. Now these screws have to be fairly long. And we're going to need approximately one, two, six. So we need 12 screws. Do we have enough screws here? We have three there. Four. We have four here. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Try to match these up, see which ones are which. Not quite sure. So let me just open up one of these that is combined with a bunch of screws and nuts and hope that it's those. And move these off to the side. Again, these are this is the most important part. You want to make sure you have the right the right things to put things together. Very important. Um, if you don't have them, you can wind up messing things up quite a bit. We have a lot of nuts here. And we have a lot of screws here. So I'm going to make an assumption that these are the ones we're going to need to use. Now I'm going to try to compare these to the picture. And these actually look like the right ones. Let's see if they fit in the hole. They do. And do they fit these nuts here? They do. Okay, so it looks like these are the ones we're going to need. Alrighty. So let's continue with where we were. Let's go back to step one, which is the supporting leg templates or plates. And we're just going to kind of put these in there, see how they fit. And that fits in there nicely. Now let's go ahead and uh, grab my screwdriver.